morning everybody so today we are gonna talk about the id system that we have in the philippines so i don't know if i mentioned this a lot in our videos in our past videos but i will be talking one by one or each of the IDs that we have in the Philippines. What we have here is the 10 IDs that we have in the Philippines. So this kind of, some of these are kind of required when you are applying for a job. So number one ID here is the baptismal. So baptismal was given to you or given, it was issued by the church. So this is only for Roman Catholic. For the other religion, I don't know what they issued on you when, whenever you are baptized. But this one is baptismal. For me, it was useful when I get my passport. But if you are only a lake registered. So this one is, you know, it varies. This is not a main ID, but for my situation, this is useful. This was useful. So that is the baptismal. So number two is the birth certificate, the birth registration or a birth certificate. So this ID was issued by your town. So this was, you know, so in our situation in the Philippines, um, whenever someone gives birth in the village, sometimes they don't have a doctor. They have the, okay, we called it Manaram in our language. Manaram is someone who, who knows how to deliver a baby. So they are not registered and they're not nurses or they're not midwife. They are someone in your the village that is known to deliver a baby. And they have some sort of, it's some sort of ancient or, it's not a modern thing, okay? I don't know how else to describe this, but this is very, very different than professionals. We trust them because they've done that a lot, but they have some sort of, you know, knowledge of giving birth a baby or delivering a baby. So, whenever someone in our village give birth, we call onto them or we, you know, we ask for their help. So, anyway, that was the method that is used in our village. Hence, when my mother gave birth, we weren't registered, you know, it's like it was kind of ignorance of the law. So, anyway. I wasn't registered till I was like grade school, like grade 5 or grade 6. So I was considered late registered. So this kind of certificate or birth registration certificate was it was issued by the town, town hall or barangay hall, something like that. I don't know the real terminology, I forgot. So anyway, you have to go to the town and get it in the town hall or some sort of office of the government and then it was issued to you. So when my mother get all those birth certificates, I think she did it at once for six of us. So um, some of us are late registered which if you are gonna apply for a passport you are gonna be needing baptismal or form 137 137 is a document you can get on your school which i had already in my other videos okay number three is nso or national statistics office birth certificate so we have two kinds of birth certificate the first birth certificate is um, the birth registration certificate was issued by your town. So this was used when you graduated high school, I guess that is one of the requirements. But then the NSO or National Statistic Office, which is now changed 
Duterte changed the name of it, which is now PSA or Philippine Statistic Office. So we have our birth certificate there. So this is issued and then this one is the very important one. The birth certificate was not, it's kind of useless if you say it that way. It was useless but then the NSO or PSA is the very important one. This one is you can use when you are applying for passport or when you are applying for a job or when you apply for a college when you go to school so the birth certificate when you have this one when you have the PSA or NSO when you have that you don't need the birth certificate anymore which is this one by the way is still a birth certificate but then it's just issued by a higher standard of government so anyway we have our number four which is the NBI or National Bureau of Investigation Clearance so this ID is needed when you are applying for passport, when you are applying for a job, or when you want to obtain some documents. But this ID expires every six months, if I'm not wrong. Maybe a year or six months. It's either just two. So what happened is in the Philippines, our job system we kind of have a contractualization that means you end your job every five months or six months it depends on the company but when I was there I end my job every five months so when you are applying for a job you are always gonna need the NBI or National Bureau of Investigation clearance you always need this hence you know most people in the Philippines, when they are applying for the job, they're going to need this. What happened is, when you need this, there are always, always a long line for this, for you to obtain this ID. Always a long line. When I was there, it takes me, it should take me one day to get this, to get this kind of ID. Okay. When I was there, I, I go to Robinson's Mall and then I was there really, really early in the morning and then you know what? There were a bunch of people waiting outside the mall already to get this ID and then that time, I don't know if they changed the system now, that time the guards won't give people numbers so what happened is we just lined up as long as it can go until the mall opens and then when the mall opens the guards starting to give away numbers which is you know it's not organized it's kind of mess up situation but that's how we deal it in the Philippines it is very very messed up it's not it's not comforting it's not it's something very very hard so number five is the SSS number or social security system number so this one is very important when you are getting a job we have them two in the states here so we don't have the SSS ID which I think it's it's just a touch in the paper I didn't cut it out so we were we kind of not required to bring this in our wallet here in the US. It's like the most important ID, I guess, which people should not know about. But anyway, in the Philippines, we got the SSS number and SSS ID. So SSS ID, you can use that as a valid ID or something that you use to obtain a government document so you can use that anyway let's talk about first the SSS number so whenever you are applying for a job we have the so-called E1 form which is a pink form and that is the one that that is your SSS number so you will be issued by A1 form and then you will have your SSS number so that time it took me a day 
let's say half day to get the document so when I was getting that document I didn't have to get my ID right away so when you want to get your SSS ID you have to go back you know to do the line again which is different process but same office so they don't do it in a one line you know like you do it at once they, they won't do it like that i don't know why he could have done it i guess you know when you can get your sss number you would go to another step which is sss id but you won't do it or maybe i just don't know how to do it when i was there so anyway we have they call it now the UMED ID the SSS ID was now called UMED ID which is multi unified multi-purpose ID so I know when I was there I can use the SSS ID as a valid ID to obtain government documents or something you know but my sister said that it was called unified multi-purpose id now because she said it's considered as a valid id so when i was there it's already a valid id and then they changed it to unified multi-purpose id which i think this is what i think they put they use the sss id as a fell health id and pagibig id so it it's like one id at once but uh, don't quote me on this um, I'm not sure on that but that's what I heard when I was there that's why they said they were changing the SSS ID to unified multi-purpose ID which having the three IDs at once so don't quote me on that but that's what I think it is that change so we have this number six the fell health ID so this ID is not a valid ID but you kind of need this when you are you know with your health insurance or something we don't have health insurance but we have the fell health it's like a health insurance by the government so this one was taken from our paycheck and then it was taken our paycheck like every 15 days just like health insurance here but this one is like a government thing Fell health ID when I was hospitalized in the Philippines. I issued this to the hospital which where I was in and then they have a room, like a hospital room for people with fell health ID. And then I show it to them and then they take me to this kind of private, semi-private room. It's like six people or four people in one room. Let's see. I don't remember anymore but it's few people because if you are not in a semi private room when you are in a public area room in the Philippines you're like 10 or something there's a lot of people in one room and you guys are using only one bathroom which is the bathroom by the way is so so dirty it looks like no one have claimed it that's just how it is in the philippines so anyway with this using this full health id you will have an access to semi private room which sometimes only three or two of you is using one bathroom more comforting but then when i was i worked like two years you know in the philippines and then when i presented this id the nurse said that my ID was empty, nothing on it, no money on it. So what they did was they charged me for a private room or using that room. That's what happened. So it's kind of have no choice. No, I don't know why my employer have no money on my fill hold, but that's just how it is in the Philippines sometimes. You can pursue it, but sometimes you just have to let it go and get another job. So number seven is Pag-ibig ID, Pag-ibig Fund ID. So this ID is not a valid ID, you know. This is ID for only certain things, 
like only for pag-ibig fan by the way is some sort of you or some sort of government program giving housing or helping housing to the Filipinas so if you have this pag-ibig fund ID you it will take out some money from your paycheck and then you can loan for a housing that is provided by the government so let's see houses from some houses of this one is far away from the city because these are houses that was built by the government and this was you know issued to the people who has this ID or some sort of this program Pag Ibig Fund so I know a lot of people that get a house through Pag Ibig Pag Ibig Fund and then sometimes they're far away from the Metro Manila like Bulacan Bulacan is I don't know how far it is but there's some sort in far from the city because I would think that the government would you know would not build that it's gonna take a lot of money to have some housing right in the heart of the city you know so they were kind of outside of the city which is you know for those who have families that needed housing those they can get but you know they just have to have hard time with the transportation which sucks by the way number eight is passport so passport is just like here in the United States it is a valid government ID but not all Filipinos get this ID because you know some me I only get this passport because I was gonna leave the country but for some people who are not planning to leave the country they're not really gonna get this ID you know so to obtain this passport ID you're gonna get you're gonna need three government IDs that means you're gonna get net SSS ID or UMID ID or NBI which is NBI is always needed to get some documents you know if you need some ID NBI is always gonna be needed and this ID by the way always expires in six to one year and then another one is NSO birth certificate so they said you need three government IDs or three government documents number nine is the driver's license so we have also driver's license in the Philippines but this ID is you know very useful to those people who drive but not most people is driving in the Philippines like me when I was there I always take the public transportation so I am not gonna get a driver's license just for the ID so this only applies to the people that drives you you know that already so as you know not people drives hence not people in the Philippines have driver's license anyway this ID by the way is very useful just like here in the US it is very useful to obtain uh, another ID or another document number 10 that we have is the TIN ID or tax identification ID so I don't know I haven't heard about this I know we pay tax here but I don't know if you have some sort of ID here in the United States but we have them in the Philippines we have our ID with our tax number there and our photo there but anyway I didn't get this document I didn't get this ID because this ID is not a valid ID so you cannot use this to obtain another ID or to obtain a document so I just talked to my sister in the Philippines and she said that Duterte approves the generalized ID already which we're having if 
if that ID was, you know, being accepted all over the place, which is gonna be great, you know, we're not gonna need this a lot of ID for us. But if it wasn't, you know, if other companies of other agency would just accept a particular ID, this is just going to be additional ID for us to do. Which I hope not. Because if it's a generalized ID, they would consider it, you know, as a valid ID and only ID for you to present. Just like here in the U.S. My green card, I can use it to obtain, you know, my another ID, just one ID. They're not gonna ask for another photocopy of another ID, something like that. So anyway, I don't know if I'm just being helpful here, or I'm just confusing you. But those are the IDs that we have, we kind of have to have when we are in the Philippines. Especially if you are looking for a job Which by the way when you are looking for a job in the Philippines if you are looking for uh, a Decent pay like a minimum wage pay You're gonna need at least a week to Have all the documents ready for you to start up here when I have you know, apply for a job, I present an ID, and they get me my x-ray, and that's all. In the Philippines, you have to get mayor's permit, work permit, lots of, you know, medical. And whenever you get those documents, there's always going to be a line. So anyway, that's enough for today. And I hope this is interesting. Give us a like, and please subscribe to our channel. I will see you next time.